Welcome back to the next video in the WISD Beginner series. I'm your host, Rory McNicholas, and today we're going to be looking at creating, reading, and updating records and a variety of backend tools that we can use alongside WISD. In this video, we're going to look at CRUD, create, read, update and delete is what that stands for. And this refers to how we can manipulate data that we store in a database that is connected to our web application. This database and the APIs that we will use to interact with the database are typically hosted in what we call a backend or a BAS, backend as a service, a backend tool that we pay to use just like we pay to use Webflow and WIST. So that raises the question, why do we need a backend tool? WISD allows us to create and manage JavaScript. And this JavaScript is run client-side. That means it's run in the client's browser or the user's browser. Two issues with that. The first is that WISD is not suitable for long-term storage of information. We can store information in the user's browser in the form of local or session variables, but users can go in and manipulate this information. If you think of an online video game where you have a high scoreboard, if you store that information in the user's browser, firstly, they can go in and edit it and change their high score. And secondly, there isn't a central repository for that information. So you can't see at a glance what the current top scores are. The same applies for the functionality. Because the JavaScript that we create in WISD is client-side in the user's browser, a tech-savvy user can view and even manipulate that logic. So if there is important logic, business logic, we typically call this, that we do not want people to be able to manipulate, that has to be set up securely on a backend so that the ways in which users interact with it are specifically set up and controlled by us. As a result, we typically use three tools together, Webflow, WISD, and some tool as the backend service. We're going to get started in the next couple of tutorial videos with using Airtable as this backend service, as it's very useful for quickly getting up and running with a simple backend. But we're also going to look at a variety of other tools that are most commonly used with WIST. WIST can be paired with pretty much any backend service, sometimes called a BAS, backend as a service, similar to how a SaaS tool is software as a service. These typically allow us to store, manipulate, and retrieve information. That's that fancy crud word that we talked about, create, read, update, and delete. And they will allow us to usually create API endpoints. These are areas of the web app that we can send information to. And we can set these up to have inputs, functions that are then executed, and an output that is returned back to the front end. We can also often set tasks to be repeated at certain intervals. For example, we created a booking engine for a client recently, and there's a task that runs every 15 minutes to send reminders. If an event is 24 hours or two hours away, an email reminder gets sent. Those are often called cron jobs or repeating tasks. Different backends have different capabilities, advantages and disadvantages, and we'll look at those in just a moment. Firstly, we can break these backends into two types, those that have native WISD integrations and those that do not. WISD can directly integrate with Airtable, Firebase, MemberStack, and Superbase. That means that you can integrate with these tools a bit more easily, there's less coding to do, but you can use any other backend if it has what's called a REST API. Any sort of backend as a service that you can find out there is more than likely going to allow you to set up REST APIs. Xano is a very common example. And just because it doesn't have an integration does not mean that it's very difficult to implement. Xano is actually the most common backend that we see used with WIST. In no particular order, here we have these five most common backend services. I'll give you a moment to pause this and take a look through this table. I am going to go through 
the interface for these one by ones, but I'll spare you me reading out these pros and cons lists. You can pause the video, take a look so that these make sense to you. So now that we've had a quick overview of those, let's quickly go through them while looking at their UIs or their user interfaces. Starting with Airtable, many of you will be familiar with it. It's a powerful combination between spreadsheet and databasing software. It's very useful for learning how to use WISD or very quickly creating a prototype web application because it integrates directly with WISD and you can get a lot done in it without having to do any coding. That said, it is not a good option for large scale web applications that you're deploying for the public to use because you can't create the kind of complex functionality that some of the other tools can. And it also has rate limiting. Most backend services have rate limiting. This is where there's only a certain amount of times you can hit the service or call an API endpoint before it'll stop, make you pause. It's pretty low with Airtable comparatively to other backend services because its main use is not to power a backend, but it is very useful for prototyping. Next up, we have Firebase. This is the one I have the least to say about because it just happens to be the one that I have used the least. I can tell you that this is actually what powers WISD as a piece of software. All of your projects that you create are stored in Firebase. A lot of developers like it. It makes authentication very quick and easy to set up. And it's also one to keep an eye on because Gemini, Google's AI software, now integrates with it and it can help you to build apps very quickly in Firebase. Definitely one to keep an eye out. Member Stack is not really a backend as a service. I've mostly included it here because it's listed as one of our integrations. It is very commonly used without WISD to enable memberships inside of Webflow to allow people to pay for subscriptions to gate content. It's a very powerful and popular tool. It's just not a good option for a backend. Now, what we have seen it used for a lot is login and authentication because it makes it very quickly to allow people to register or log in with a number of different services and providers. Next up, we have Superbase. Superbase describes itself as an open source alternative to Firebase. The main advantage that it has is its pricing is very good. They have a very generous free plan and their paid plan starts at $25 a month, which is in sharp contrast to Xano's pricing that we'll look at in a moment. The main challenge with Superbase is you will be looking at a lot more code than you would with the other options we have discussed here. That said, they do have Superbase Assistant, an AI assistant that is very powerful and can write a lot of the code for you. So this is a very good option for smaller web applications where even though you have to write code, you don't have to do as much of it if it's a small project and the fee structure is a lot better. Lastly, we have Xano. Xano is the most popular backend service that is currently used across Wiz as a platform. It is also the backend service that we most commonly use when building web applications for clients inside of FinSuite. The main con, I would say probably the only con about Xano is the pricing. The build plan, the free plan has a rate limit. Now the paid plans do not have rate limits. You can call the API as often as you want. On the free plan, there is rate limiting of 10 requests every 20 seconds. This essentially means that as soon as there are two or three or more people on your web application, it's going to stop working. You can use it to test by yourself. And even then, if you're working on a very big application, you might start to hit this rate limit. The paid plan, starts at $85 a month if you pay for the year. Monthly is 99. Now this does give you three workspaces. That is, you could create three separate DubX applications on this Xano plan. The problem is you can't just pay for one. So for personal projects, this is a very high barrier. There are not a lot of people out there who want to pay this much money for a personal project. 
But as an agency or a freelancer, somebody who is building web applications, this is a very, very good option. Xano is one of the best no-code tools. They still call themselves a no-code tool because unlike WISD, you can actually do a lot, majority of the functionality you could want to create, you can do without writing code. Now you can use code inside of it if you need to using something called a Lambda, but for the most part, there is surprisingly very little or no code involved. It has a very powerful interface for creating databases and viewing the information inside these databases. And its APIs are very powerful as well. So if we quickly take a look at one here, this is for an internal web application. We're building at FinSuite and launching very soon for our client first certification. We can set all of the inputs that we want this endpoint to be able to take. We can set the function stack, which sets out exactly what happens with those inputs. And we then set a response that we can return to our application. As an example here, this is for somebody who is creating or updating their application. If they're creating it for the first time, we get some information about the user. We check that the user doesn't have a current application and we send them an email through SendGrid. If they already have an application and they are adding some more information to it, we add that information to their record in the database and we send an API request through Slack. We're doing some Slack automations here. We also have tasks, which we don't have on this project, but again, if we wanted to check for users that meet a certain condition to send them an email and do that every day, every week, every hour, we can do that in here. And there's more in here. We'll go through this more in a further tutorial. So those are the most popular backend tools explored. We are going to go through how to do CRUD, create reading, updating and deleting in Airtable, Firebase, Superbase, and Xano in the upcoming tutorials. First, we're getting started with Airtable. Head on over to the next video, jump right in, and we'll learn how to create records inside of Airtable directly from our application using WIST.